you. What's the deal? It's time to get real with Jahaira. It's time to get real with Jahaira. YouTube. What's the deal? YouTube, what's the deal? It's your girl Jahira, and I am back. Um, so here's the thing. This is the vlog that you were not supposed to see. Um, I do this sometimes. I, I record myself. If there's a problem, if there's some kind of dilemma going on, I, you know, YouTube has taught me that when I get these words out of my head, then it's, it's kind of easier to stare at from a more critical and analytical place. I had no intentions of uploading this, but as I was talking, it, there was this sense that it it might that I might not be the only one who feels this way. That I might not be the only one who's dealing with this. And after I finished making it and I had a chance to watch it, it became much more clear that it was in fact um something I believe that somebody out there might need. Although I'm not offering any solutions in this video, I'm just presenting my problem. And um, I'm just doing as the spirit leads me and throwing it out at y'all. So without further ado, <laughs> one love. I think I just really need to get it out of my head because it has been lodged in my brain for a couple of days now. And it was one of those revelatory moments that is so earth-shattering internally. I think if I can just get it on video and stare at it and pick it apart and sit with it not ricocheting off of the cerebral cortex, then maybe I'll make some sense of it. Y'all, I'm scared. I am afraid to be in love. And that's a really hard thing to have to own up to. Because, you know, there was, um, there was no one serious after David. I mean, not for a long time, you know? It was just me. I mean, there were dates here and there and, like, you know, bullshit dalliances, but nothing of any real, ugh, substance. I'm so not uploading this. Oof. Huh. There was nobody uh, that, that was quantifiably, you know, solid. It was all just illusory. And I took that time, you know? I mean, that's what you're supposed to do, right? You know, you you regroup and, and discover who you are in the context of, of not being a we anymore. Now you're just a me. And and so you, you work on yourself. That's just what you do. That's what anybody with any amount of common sense would tell you to do. That's what I'm sure Dr. Phil has said, although, fuck him. I have issues with any man trying to tell a woman how to be. That's why I say fuck him. Or who to be. I just have issues. <laughs> But I took the time, you know, I took the time, I read all the books, I reached the conclusion that I, like so many other women, you know, have subconsciously been searching for a husband as reflected by what I saw from my father, and my father was emotionally unavailable in his marriage and so I have unconsciously 
been chasing emotionally unavailable men, and I get that. Like, I know this. But the past couple of days has really just kind of threw in my face that, you know, there have been potentials. There have been potentially great relationships. And in the moment I realized that they could be potentially great, I have ran like hell from them because I am deathly afraid of being in love. And I, I think if I'm sitting here just, you know, analyzing it, it, it might be because what my experience with love has taught me in the past, that love can, you know, that, I don't know, that love hurts, that love leaves. I mean, I just, I didn't grow up with great examples, you know? I really didn't. And then when you live the life that I had and, you know, you, you, you forge your own path, I mean... I don't see too many visible women like me living the happily ever after. You know, Janet. <laughs> Janet Mock might be the only example that, that we have to work with at the present moment. Um, you know, I... <sighs> It was always something I kept in the back of my head, you know, thumbing through wedding catalogs and, and, and dreaming of building that kind of life with somebody. But when confronted with it, I run. Because I've got, you know, these idiosyncrasies and I've got PTSD and really... Who wants to deal with all that? Who wants... Who wants somebody this damaged? And the fear is that... If I show somebody all of my parts... The parts that are broken and ugly, the parts that I can't even face myself, they'll leave. And this wouldn't even be a conversation I would be having right now with my damn self. If it wasn't for the fact that I have met somebody who is determined to break down every single one of my walls. And I am petrified. I'm petrified for so many reasons. I'm petrified because I don't know how to articulate to somebody this barrier, this force field has taken years to build up and it's it's not gonna come down off of a simple it's gonna be okay or I'm here now. There have been other ones who were here now that have since gone or were never really here to begin with and and my ass was just so desperate to be validated in the sense of having a romantic partner and, and being someone's girlfriend, you know, mind you, I was a whole lot younger then, but I, like, I felt like I needed that so badly that I was happy to be a doormat, you know, clearly I'm right back on the David situation here, you know, s simply to prove to myself and the world and fat people and trans people and all the naysayers that that I could be loved. And now I've built this 
sense of self-worth. I mean, I you know, it's not an act with me. I, I really do know what I bring to the table. And my head says, you're ready for this. You're you're ready to be loved. You're ready to be appreciated and adored and and all the things that come with this. But my heart goes, wait a minute. I don't know if I can handle having to pick up the pieces and start over yet again. It's like I'm looking for guarantees and there are none. And I know that there are none. Hell, even a ring isn't even a guarantee anymore. I just, I don't know if I still have the kind of faith that it takes to jump off that cliff and believe that you're going to fly. It's probably the worst example in the world, but like I keep going back to that whole scene in damn near every Charlie Brown movie where he's trying to kick the football and Lucy just keeps snatching it away from him before he gets a chance to like (laughs) am I going to spend the rest of my days on this earth having never kicked the damn ball I don't know I want to give this thing a chance, you know? I think I just have to drown out the voice that says, prepare to fail. I just wish I knew how. I wish I knew how.